Chapter 26, Voting. The following Monday at school, our homeroom teacher made an announcement that really no one could have been ready for. She needed a candidate for Peyton County High High Club. And no, I'm not joking. In an age where cannabis use and recreational drugs are at a forefront of parental concerns, our beloved high school named the prom decorating and planning committee the High Club and stuck with the name. The plan was, according with the announcement, that to keep things dem democratic and fair, you could not choose to be on the high club and had to serve so that the prom graduation were true representations of the student body. So, Mom, I didn't plan on being the, uh, the er ironically named Council of Students responsible for grad planning to be forever immortalized in the Peyton County yearbook. But hey, democracy, right? After the announcements finished, my name was drawn from the hat so I could speak. So hat, so to speak, and I was excused from class to meet with four other students picked for the task. Two, which seemed to have somehow rigged the election process, as they already had a binder full of ideas and pamphlets and vendor quotes to bring to our first meeting. A scathing indictment of how public schools teach their students about politics, I guess. Anyway, Katie Godal, Jenna Brinks, and Simon Dingy somehow made up the high, the high club. I knew Katie and Jenna from the halls, but had never spoken with them much, and Simon hung out with Tony sometimes and had a reputation of being the class stoner. Sticker. The meeting consisted of the office administrators running us through the responsibility to provide a dance and refreshments for the graduation weekend. Simon and I watched as Katie and Jenna basically pulled everything we needed from their binder and spent most of the time waiting on a vote we needed to confirm things, as if we were going to make any style, fashion, or aesthetic decisions between the two of us. Now, don't get me wrong. I think guys should have just as much as, just as much to say on these things as anyone. But the guys chosen for this, a skateboarding team from Toronto, and the guy who must have mistakenly volunteered for this position due to its unfortunate name, don't. The highlight of the roundtable discussion voting was the decision to have a video dance at the prom. Katie had a line on a company that could bring in three floor-to-ceiling screens and all the music would be played with corresponding dance music videos. It seemed exciting to the girls and Simon was probably getting the munchies and I was impartial. After we concluded the session, a wicked thought crossed my mind and I rushed to find Sean and ask him if my plan would work. Sean, how, is it easy, how easy is it to get into the school's non-student Wi-Fi, I asked. Mm, this feels like entrapment, he responded. Mm. Rightfully so. If anyone was going to get fingered as the hacker in the school, it would be him. I explained the video dance and a possible solution you'll read about later in the book. It might just be worth the police charges. Let me get back to you, was all he said. I quickly ran to my next class, physics, and sat down beside Sarah, a goofy smile on my face. What are you smiling about, she asked. But I did not answer. This was going to be fun. It was chapter 26, voting. Uh, yeah, I was part of the high club in high school. That's where that name came from. I, I still can't believe it's a thing. I have a yearbook with me on the high club. And um, yeah, like, come on. It, it's got to pass the grade six test. Would a grade six boy laugh at the name that you're choosing for the student body representatives for prom committee? No? Uh, then you should probably do something else with that name. Uh, even just call it, you know, the student body uh, committee or anything. Because high club, high club. You guys have a good one. Links in the description.